Today we're talking about what I call the trauma compass, how the nervous system orients itself under threat, not as morals, not as personality flaws, but the automatic survival directions that form over time. As I walk you through this, you can follow along on the map. The watchtower with its two-way radio with the DMN takes the story and meaning and sends it to the Mohawk of self-awareness. The ACC says, this matters. Do we fight, move, freeze, or submit? Then the insula sends the body sensations into awareness and the PCC and Prakineus decide how that experience becomes part of the memory. In trauma, these systems stop working together and the nervous system starts steering in one of four different survival directions. Direction one, toward people. Fawn, people-pleasing, emotional caretaking. Safety comes from keeping others calm, connected, or pleased even at the cost of yourself. Direction two, toward control. Hyperfunctioning, perfectionism, planning, self-suppression. Everything is managed, so maybe nothing will fall apart. Direction three, toward distance. Detaching, intellectualizing, retreating into thought. If I stay out of the emotional storm, I survive it. Direction four, toward escape. Distracting, fantasy, sensation seeking, creative flight. If my mind or body is somewhere else, the pain can't reach me. No matter which compass, it's the same science. The watchtower shifts into threat seeking mode. The ACC keeps flagging error, causing the insula to keep signaling danger and the PCC and Precuneus help lock those patterns into memory. The compass doesn't choose what's best. It chooses what feels safest in that environment. The four different directions work in trauma, but they come with a price if we can't turn directions when we're safe. Tomorrow, we'll talk about the healing compass. How, with safety and nervous system repair, those four directions can transform into choice, connection, and grounded presence without abandoning yourself.